okay, okay, okay. All right, cool, cool. Hold on, real quick. Let me make sure I get all this in there. All right, Junebug trucking in the well. Damn, hold on. He said don't use Junebug. Okay, June. Okay, June in the building. What's going on, my G? Not much, man. Not much. Just fucking. Just fucking. That's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. Uh, first off, I, I appreciate you coming on to the show, man, and uh, sharing some of your experience. Uh, let, let's start off from uh, from the offset, man. You say you've been you say you've been rocking with me for what for about two years. How did you come across me in the first place? That's, that's a good question. Um, well. Uh, well, initially, I think it might have been December of 19, I want to say. I was in school. I was just getting my license back then. And uh, I was following uh, Trucker Brown, Lotion Parks, a whole bunch of other. Yeah, the main, the, the main stays, the main stays of trucking. I think if you I think if you was to type in trucking, those those two yeah. those two names that just that that you just mentioned will automatically probably pop up. You know, I, I know Trucker Brown. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's yeah, good. So, so does, so, so, oh, yeah, I'm so I'm in a, I'm in the ech- so. wait 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 I'm in the echelon of that too. Like, okay, I never thought. Okay, I never thought that I was up there with the. I didn't think I was up there with the big boys. You know, when people say <laughs> when when people say Trucker Brown and and Lil Shine Parts. Nowhere does it say lockout, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I know I'm, I'm, you know I'm just, I'm, I'm just kidding because when I do type in uh, trucking or or anything trucker related, I, you know, I might not be in the 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 first uh, what what is it? The first page of YouTube search or whatever. But I know that I I'm somewhere along the lines of you know of one of the youtubers that's that's in that trucking field of youtube man all right so you say you uh so you you say you just found me along with trucker brown uh what what if you can remember was there was a particular video that that kind of that kind of had you gravitate towards me or or what um, I don't know which company, but I I know it was one of your calls, MTC. Okay, okay, you okay. Know, you made a call to some company. I just can't remember which one, but very informative. And, you um, know, you know, along with the other YouTubers, I I was using to help me, you know, get my foot in the door, so to speak. All right. So what you so June, man? What 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 you was doing uh, before trucking? Like, I mean, what what you was doing beforehand before you got into trucking? Believe it or not, I was in banking and finance ever since I was 19 years old. So I had a very extensive uh, background uh, in the finance uh, field. Stop broker fact, on uh, you, rich, stop broker on Wall Street, bro. That's that's money right there. Would well, uh, that's that's a that's yeah. a that's a far cry from from being a stop broker on Wall Street to being a uh, truck driver now. I, let me tell you something. The key word in stockbroker is broke. Because when I first started, <laughs> wait, let me let me explain my story. Uh, when I first started, uh, it was after 2008, the whole recession, and I was in a bad situation. You know, I just had a baby, I was bankrupt, and you name it. I couldn't find a job anywhere because, as you remember, 2008, all times, it was, it was hard to find a job back then. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until the summer of 2011, uh, I had an opportunity uh, to join a, a firm on Wall Street and their stockbroker training program. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing about it is I was, I was on welfare at the time. I think you not. I was on welfare. Okay. And um, they told me either I had to get a job or they were going to send me to the subway, to, uh, subway station to start cleaning up to keep my benefits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I was like, no, I ain't going to do that. So luckily for me, I found this program to get my Series 7 license, which was then give me the license to sell investment products, stocks, bonds, you name it, 
over the phone over the phone to reach all the bullshit. Now you know what they, to to to, to hear you to to hear you say that word series seven. I I heard of that word before, but I seen it in a movie. Um, yeah. Boiler room. If I'm not mistaken, are you are you familiar with that movie? Yeah. With uh, Vin oh, Diesel. Oh yeah, that's a famous one. Is is oh, is, yeah, is everything is 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 everything that was portrayed in that movie? Uh, is that like real life? That was actually portrayed in that movie, or no? Uh, or well, some of it. A lot of their sales pitches. So the way that they were selling the stocks over the phone, that was called the straight line pitch, mm-hmm. and that's true. In fact, that that originated uh, back in the eighties and nineties from the original Wolf of Wall Street. I'm sure you remember. Right, I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen that movie too. Up. Yeah, but that that straight line pitch—that's a fact. Yeah, that. In fact, I had to learn that pitch. So when, so, so, what was that dude's name? I forgot his name. Uh, Ben, Ben, Ben Affleck. That was Ben Affleck. No, uh, no, that well, was well, back that, in the eighties. No, that was Ben Affleck that came in the room and 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 did oh, the yeah, monologue. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That that was him yeah, that did yeah. the monologue right. talking about uh, what he what he you know what he inspect out of him and everything like that. So. But wow! Exactly. But, but wow! Okay, okay. Well, so yeah, I had to get my series seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, by the way, that let me tell you something. I'm Puerto Rican and black from Jamaica, Queens. Mm-hmm. Nobody in my family uh, ever even heard of a series seven, let alone knew anything about investments or or bonds on the Wall Street Journal. Nothing like that. Uh, and at the time, I was living in a very bad neighborhood, and I was tired of being broke and being a product of my environment. Right. right. But I had a passion for investing. I, I don't know why. I just I just did. So when they gave me that opportunity, I took it. I mean, mind you, I'm a college dropout. But the, but the issue is that test is six hours long, 250 Damn. questions. And honestly, you had to get a 72 or better. And the classroom that I was in was filled with a bunch of Ivy League college kids studying to take the same exam that I was and they were way smarter than me and they were failing me today. How how many people out of and, out of your class how, how many people if you could if you could still remember how many people in your class that made it through? About eight or nine and I was one of them. Damn I was of, actually the first one at out of fifty? Yeah, it was a big class. Fifty, sixty and yeah, there was only about eight or nine of them. I was one of them. I, See, the thing is, I wanted it bad. You know, I, I literally was the first one in the office, and I didn't leave because I didn't want to go home. Mm-hmm. At the time, I was staying with my uncle, living in East New York, Brooklyn, living in a bad neighborhood, and I didn't have a laptop, didn't have a computer, and I just didn't want to go home. So uh, a good friend of mine, Gene, uh, he used to work for Chase back in the day. He once told me, if you want to change your life, change your surroundings. And that's what I did. I, I didn't like where I was living at, so I stayed in Manhattan. Even in lower Manhattan, I used to go to the Starbucks where all those kids from, you know, NYU went or, you know, uh, Columbia. And I would just, you know, follow the nerds, basically. And I was just studying all the time. And by the grace of God, I took my exam Christmas week of 2011, and I passed. How? And how eight months later. I was about to. I was about to ask you how how long how long was it uh, that you that you stayed in the that you stayed in the stockbroker industry because um, in 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 your in your bad story that I'm reading uh, you 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 kind of got into some trouble so was that was I'll, I'll let you explain oh, that. yeah I'll let you explain that it was was that part of you being yeah. in the stockbroker industry or was that oh. something else totally different. Oh. Oh, no, that, that's the next story. No, that had nothing to do with it. Um, so basically, after I got my license, um, I only did that maybe for about a year. And then once my contract was up, I didn't I didn't raise enough capital to, to make money, really. That's mainly a commission-based job anyway. Uh, so essentially, once my contract was up, I left. And luckily for me, a friend of mine had relocated to Arizona. He got a job as a financial advisor for another major investor firm. He told me about it. Mm-hmm. And did an interview over the phone. 
and I got the job, and literally, uh, I have a five hundred dollars to my name, suitcase, a one way ticket. I left New York, went to Arizona, and I haven't looked back since. So you still in uh, you you so, still in Arizona now, right? Yeah, still living in Arizona. Oh, uh, uh, about ten years now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you you moved out there you moved out to Arizona you you out there you 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 working everything was going good until until I tried to help out a family member <laughs> ain't ain't ain't, ain't it always I had a, yeah I don't want to go into too much details but let's just say a family member of mine was in a really bad situation in New York. I sent for them to stay with me in Arizona, trying to help them out, mm-hmm. and everything just backfired. And uh, I did some things I'm not proud of. All I have to say is cops got called, I got arrested, I got charged with domestic violence, aggravated assault. <sighs> uh, my family member didn't want to drop the charges, wanted to cooperate with the DA. And long story short, he threw the book at me. I got I uh, got a felony conviction. Okay, wait, wait. You you said family me uh you say family member and domestic violence. So this this wasn't against uh uh your your wife or anything like that? This was like no. what, like a cousin oh. or uh, uh Oh, it was to be exact, it was my sister. What? Yeah, domestic violence isn't his boyfriend and girlfriend. Domestic violence is anyone in your family too. Wow. Man. You know? And by the way, just for the record, for your audience, because there's a bad stigma around domestic violence. They, whenever they hear that, they're thinking it's just a guy beating, beating a woman so she's like bloody and dead. Domestic violence could be verbal, too. Just want to throw that out there because it doesn't have to always be to that extreme. But, but again, I'm not going to go into too much details. Just, right, just right. No, a best friend. A, a best friend, an ex girlfriend, and my sister was involved, and I lost it. And I flipped out. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Man, and and your sister went against you, pretty much. Was it was it your sister yeah, that you know was it your sister that you brought out to Arizona to try to help? Yeah, exactly. And. And and she returned she she returned your gratitude with with some ill stuff that got you in some serious trouble because you know dom- domestic violence is 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 kind of serious you know it's kind of it's kind of hard for it's kind of hard for a man to fight that you see what I'm saying you know you can't yeah that's why I had to plead out and uh, take the conviction because if I would have went to trial. It would have been her word against mine, and I don't think there's any jury in America that would take my, my side of the story over a female on the stand. So, and I was facing, I was facing six and a half years in prison for it, uh, but with the plea offer that they gave me, I took probation for three years, so I had no chance, no, no choice. I just took, I took wow. the felony, I took the probation, and just moved on with my life. So you pretty much what 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 the convention uh what the convent you know with the convention here and you being labeled as a fel uh, as a felon now you you pretty much lost 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 everything you had that you was working I mean that uh that you had worked for man how did that make you feel when when you came out or how did that make you feel so, towards your towards your sister man. Well, okay, so here's what I will say, just for the record. I was wrong for what I did. I'm not trying to say what I did. Uh, yeah, you don't have to. It wasn't my fault because it was. Yeah, like, I, I was wrong for what I did. I think what was more heart, heartbreaking was the mere fact the case was pending for a year, and yet even after a year, she wanted to cooperate with the DA and was willing to testify against me. I think that's what broke my heart more than anything else. Even my lawyer said it. Usually in cases like this with family, after a year, they're willing to just drop the charges and work things out outside right. the court with this. But like, that wasn't the case with me. Like she, so that broke my heart. But it is what it is because let me tell you something. Everything in life happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. And after that happened, the trucking industry saved my life. I'm forever grateful for that. 
Now, now coming into, you know, now you're, you, you, you got that tag on your back, uh, you know, as a felon now, um, you know, you, you went to go and get your, you went to go and get your CDL. How hard was it for you to get into the trucking industry with, with, uh, with, with that tag oh on your back? Oh my God. Let me tell you something. So there's two parts to it. So number one, Felony, I was, I'm a convicted felon of a violent offense. The, yeah. So that's one thing. Yeah. Number. number two, the thing I didn't tell you, when I put down, I got locked up and everything, I was drunk. I was drinking, so I was under the influence. Mm -hmm. When I uh, when the incident happened, I left the scene of the crime, and I got in my car. They pulled me over. Got a DUI for that. So I got both the same day. Man. So when I came into the trucking industry, I came in with the felony of a violent offense and a DUI. <sighs> so, so yeah, it was. So you very got hard so you got two strikes. You you got two strikes going against you. So that's that's that was tough. So out of all the companies that tough. that you that you applied for, uh, which companies that gave you the opportunity back in the day? So luckily for me, um, I waited. Uh, once my uh, DUI turned three years old, um, I was able to get an opportunity uh, with... Oh, wait, and I'm sorry, before I jump to that, let me just say one thing. Though, Go ahead. Because I'm sure there's a lot of... I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that, you know, uh, follows your channel, you mm -hmm. know, on YouTube and just looking for opportunities that are in a similar situation like myself. And prior to me becoming a truck driver for three years, all I was doing was minimum wage jobs, back breaking jobs. I mean, think about it. One year I'm making seventy to eighty thousand a year, and then the next year I'm down to ten bucks an hour and I'm breaking my back, and I lost it all. So it was very depressing, demoralizing, and everyone, I would say even your own family, judged you as if you were nobody because. Or a felon. So I know how that feels. However, I didn't use that as an excuse. And to be quite frank, I think I was in denial or almost forgot I was a felon for a long time because I didn't I didn't walk around with that, you know, stigma. Like I, I didn't I didn't allow that to define who, you know, I am as an individual. And for anyone else out there in a similar situation, don't let society do that to you. Don't let people think that because you're a felon, you made a mistake. That you're nobody and you'll never be anybody. Because let me tell you something, I didn't let that happen to me. And because of the trucking industry, I'm here to tell you right now, there is a chance. And with that being said, I went to the unemployment office. Went to the unemployment office. I uh, told them my story, and I got the WIOA federal grant. And the federal grant paid for my TDL school. Did you? Uh, what? Did, what school did you go to uh, to get your CDL? Uh, Southwest Truck Driver Training out in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so you got um. Oh, and one more, and one more thing. I, oh, I go ahead. Got go my ahead. hazmat. I got my. I, I got. And I want to let everybody know. I got my hazmat, and I got my Twit card. Ooh. That's another thing I'm noticing on uh, YouTube. They think because you're a convicted felon that the government won't approve your background check with TSA. But that's not true. All right, so you, so what you're here to say is, is that you're even if you're a convicted felon, you can still get your hazmat. Oh yeah, now great. They're gonna deny you at first. You're gonna have to appeal it, but you're gonna. Well, well, all that I did was I typed up a really good letter, nice letter. I sent in all my paperwork as far as me being off of. I wasn't on probation. I did all my classes. Told them about. EDL and everything I've been working and told them my story basically. And once they saw that, I guess they deemed me as being rehabilitated or whatever and they approved my uh, background and I you know, got my hazmat and I got my quick quick card. All right, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. That's that's what's up right there. All right, so now now you ain't trucking. How, how long you been driving, my G? Oh, uh, by the way, to answer your question, it was um it was Western Express, in case you're wondering. Western Express. That was uh, that was the company that rolled the dice for me in the beginning. It was uh, Western Express. 
West, you know what? I, I I don't I don't have nothing bad to say about Western Express. I mean, you know, if if I do, if, <laughs> <laughs> look, if Western Express is 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 the company that's going to give you your second chance, your your first chance, you know, my my thing with that is just just get in, get your experience, and get out. Because of course, Western Express, even though they they will give you the chance, they still you know uh, they still the worst company to drive for. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I, I again, I I don't have nothing bad uh, to say about them because number one, I never worked for them, but I you know I have talked to a gazillion people that has, so I'm sure you. I'm I'm sure you have one or two horror stories. So what are they? Oh Lord! Well, and like you said, they gave me a chance when no one else would. And let me tell you, when I say no one else. I'm talking about a lot of big mega carriers. Swift didn't want to hire me. Arna didn't want to hire me. It's not, you name it. I can. I must have submitted about a hundred applications. They all turned me down. But once it's crossed, they gave me a shot. So yeah, I'll probably be. Uh, indebted to them for that. I appreciate that. But three and a half months that I worked for them was absolute hell. <laughs> absolute hell. I mean, let's just say there's been times they left me stranded on the side of a road in Sacramento all because I wasn't dispatched on a road. So I had to wait until Monday morning to get a load before they send out roadside assistance mm-hmm. in the middle of the summer mountain. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my God! Payroll, the 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 load, and just all types of ah, uh, it was it was horrible, horrible. But hey, you know that's how I got into the industry. So what can I say? What you again? Like I said, you know, just just use them just to get in. You know, because like I said, there's there's plenty of horror stories from uh from Western Express from from previous drivers that has you know that has worked with them so i just pretty much just say look if if you are you know a convicted felon or you do have some skirmishes on your on your dac report or anything of that matter give western express a call because nine times out of ten they will give you your you know they will give you the opportunity but you also got to look at it this way too. They saying that they're going to give you the opportunity, but they also saying like, "Yo, you either going to have to eat shit or bounce." <laughs> 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 Pretty much. I mean, when you when you when you look at it that way, it's either either it's either our way to eat shit. Or you could just bounce and try your hand at somewhere else. See who else gonna see who else gonna give you the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, but that only lasted for like three and a half months. But then, you know, after uh while I was with them, I was I don't know how I came across uh, this website. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's a website out there that connects a lot of drivers. The smaller carriers, mm-hmm. or operators, or independent uh, drivers, if you will, and um, that basically hires people for 1099. Um, I don't know if you want me giving out the website. Or uh, go ahead, ahead, go ahead. That's fine. That's fine. Go ahead. What, what, what's the website? For metertruckdriver.com. Okay. Okay. Now you. Yeah, so now I found that. Now you you did did you want it to come in to do ten ninety nine or no? So I know there's a big there's a stigma yeah. around ten ninety nine. Remember, uh, and, I, and I don't want to be I don't want to sound arrogant. I'm, I'm on board just like everybody else out here. But at the same time, I do have a lot of knowledge and background in banking, finance, and a lot of business stuff. If you will, my business acumen is pretty good you know Mm -hmm. um so with that being said i mean i did it the right way i got my llc got my ein number got my business checking account you know i don't use my business account for personal matters i separate the two Mm -hmm. and yeah even though i'm 1099 and i'm running for myself i still run it like a business 
So I got a CPA that does my taxes, whole nine yards. The only illegal part about 1099, if you even want to deem it as such, because it's really not, uh, is the owners of the company for misclassification. That's another topic for another video. I don't want to go too much into details, but as far as a company driver 1099, as long as you're doing legitimate, you know what you're doing, and you're not commingling, let's turn like it's fun. And you're fine. Me personally, I love it. I love it. I love working for smaller carriers because as a felon and as someone that doesn't have too much experience and as someone that got to go for that money and needs a lot of money fast, you know, that is the best way to do it. Hands down. I don't care what All right. So, I, you know, with 1099, um, I, 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 in trucking, I wasn't too much of a fan of uh, being 1099, but after, again, after talking to so many, uh, so many uh, drivers that, that has done it both ways, 1099 lease and 1099 company. Yeah. If you want to come in and make money fast, quick money fast, 1099 is the way to go. You know, you can come in, you, you can come in, you could do, uh, you know, you could do as many loads as you get. You can make as much money as you want, especially if you got if if you got what a company that you're able to pick your own loads. So you can come in, make as much money as you want, save up your money and then bounce out. You know, 1099 is really not especially in trucking in my and this is only my opinion. I, you know, if you guys have something to say about that you could definitely leave the comments in the comments below but 1099 isn't isn't for people that's 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 going to retire from trucking it really isn't you know i mean 1099 is again is only for people that's coming in to get their money fast and maybe flip their money over so that they can you know maybe own their own trucks or or anything of 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 that matter. So, how long how long have you been doing ten nine? How long have you been doing ten ninety nine since you've been in been in trucking? Uh, almost a year now. Almost a year now. But one thing I do want to also mention um, is, you know, when you're coming into that much money ten ninety nine, right? Mm -hmm. Keep your receipts. I do not throw away my receipts. Mm. Or anything. And when I say receipts, obviously I'm not talking about the fuel for the truck, the truck in your truck. You can't write that off. I'm not talking about repairs on a truck because you're not paying for it. When I say receipts, I'm talking about whenever you go to Lugs, Flying J, whenever you go to Walmart, whenever you go to restaurants, you'll be surprised. The amount of money you spend on the road and the amount of money you spend grocery shopping, I have not. And trust me, when I did my taxes last year it was, and I had my CPA review it, oh, yeah, I got a bunch of write-offs just as a company driver. This is cool. <laughs> wow. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's uh, lucrative. And, yeah, you, you're not going to retire from it. But then again, who's to say that? Because when you think about it, the extra money that you have, you can take that money and you can invest. Mm-hmm. In you can invest. You can buy property. You can, you know, I mean, if you're married, like me, I'm married. My wife, she doesn't work. But because I have earned income, not only can I contribute to my, my IRA, I can do a spousal contribution into my wife's IRA. I'm sorry, that's my financial advisor cat uh, talking right now, so I apologize for that. But I'm just saying, with that extra money, you can build up your retirement fund. With that extra money, you can do a 529 college funds for your kids. You know what I'm saying? You can do estate planning. You can hire CTAs. Like, your life is so much different. There's so many more things you can do with your life without money. The problem is, when you don't have money, and you're giving all your money away in taxes and deductions, and you're left with crumbs with nothing, and you're limited as to what you can and cannot do in life. So, me personally, I love it. Man, that's that's awesome, man. All right, so what is so what is the what what is your plan for the uh for the future, man? I mean, what's what's the uh what's what's your end game? I mean, is you gonna um 
is you gonna rock out in in the industry to the to the end or you you got something you you got something planned five years down the line that's a great question that's something i've been wrestling with in the past couple of months because at one point i wanted to be an owner operator i wanted to get my truck but then i'm like ah I can't see myself doing this 20, 30 years, and there's been a lot. There's gonna be a lot of things changing in the future. Uh, but then I came across another few other opportunities. Uh, one of the, in fact, I was watching one of your shows, mm-hmm. uh, not shows, one of your interviews a few months ago. Uh, I actually spoke to your boy Well, the boy Well from Streamline. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember him, the recruiter. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I actually thought, no, I was thinking about just renting a truck. And taking eighty two percent of the load, uh, while it's uh, fully made, you know, while it's, while the maintenance is covered by the by the company. So I was thinking about doing that, but but ultimately, honestly, I just want that bag, and I'm and I'm not trying to be working until I'm 60, 70 years old. Uh, to be honest with you, um, I had a load coming down to North Carolina a few weeks ago, and I was down there, and I was able to see some of my family members that I haven't seen in like over ten years. I was talking to them in their 70s. They've been retired since they were 50. For the past 30 years, they've just been kicking their feet up, living life, enjoying life. And honestly, I kind of want to do the same thing. So I've been studying this whole movement. It's called FIRE. It's called Financial Independence, Retire Early. Mm-hmm. Type that in on YouTube. You'll see plenty of videos about that. There's a lot of coupons. And me being a former financial advisor, I, I personally know the importance of pounding interest, pounding your return. So if you save enough money, invest enough money, again, yeah, eventually you can live off of your return and never have to touch your money at all and don't have to work. But honestly, I'm trying to retire early and enjoy life, man. So I don't think I'm ever going to own a title or have a title to a truck. I might rent a truck. But right now, I'm just going for that bag and I'm just living life and just enjoying, enjoying time with my family. Well, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, June, man, thanks for coming on to share your uh, your story with us, man. I really do appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, coming in as 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 an you know, hearing your story as 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 a convicted felon, and uh, and the you know the D the DUI, you know, the two strikes. Uh, because you know what what, what what some of these companies they you know even though they they hollering that they need drivers that they need drivers and all like that but those are two two big strikes that 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 can't get you into the door and it's just unfortunate that you had to that you had to go and and and, and rock out with a with a with a company like a restaurant express to 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 even get your you know, to even get your foot in the door. You know what I'm saying? And it's just that you had to take I so much. It on the, on the way, bro. Yeah, you had to take so much stuff from them. But on the flip side of that, it it worked out because you was able to stay there. You 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 got your experience, and with experience, you was able to you know able to turn it around and get something else out of it. And that's you know being a ten ninety nine, making your money, saving your money, and doing you know and got other and got other plans. So again, man, thank you very much okay. for coming on. Yeah, you know what? I appreciate you having me on the channel doing the interview, and you know one one final thought, and then I'll let you go. You know when I was at Western Express, I literally was only making four or five hundred a week. Mm-hmm. Um, ever since I went independent. And you know, running the way I run, no less than three thousand twenty five hundred a week, no less. Now you no know what, change. June, Go June. It, listen, this this is what I need to know. I I need you to, I need you to find, I so. I, I, I need you to find somebody. <laughs> because see, I you know, hearing from you, you you know, you say you bring it home, you know, but you ten ninety nine, okay. you know, you 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 grossing about two thousand three thousand a week. But see, that's ten ninety nine. I need to know a company driver that's W two that's doing that. 
And I'm I'm yeah, talking I'm 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 talking the regular, you know, like either reefer or dry van. Yeah. Not not heavy haul because you could probably you could probably, you know, command that heavy haul specialized. But I'm talking about as far as, you know, um, like regular companies. Oil oh, oh, okay. Uh, maybe the oil field. Okay. The oil field. Is that think, is I that W is that specialized for is that W two though? Yeah, and it's so funny. I'm in Texas. I'm in West Texas. I'm about to pass the oil field right now to speak. But it's funny you mention that. But yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of oil companies. Uh, w two. I mean, you're doing the The thing is, you're gonna work. You're gonna be doing like 80, 90 hours a week, but they pay you thirty five dollars an hour. Mm. You do the math on that. That's like twenty five hundred, maybe three grand a week. W two. Mm. No, but nobody wants to do that. Though, think about it. You're you're, you have to live in a man cave, as they call it. <laughs> it's dirty, it's rugged, but I mean, yo, that's W2. That, that, that could be like three brand gross. Okay. For the driver, but, but you're right, though. There's not really too many opportunities to do that as a company driver. And I, all I keep hearing people complain about is taxes, taxes, taxes. Mm-hmm. Keep your receipts and get a CPA and just. Separate your business expenses from your personal expenses. It's not simple. <laughs> That's what's up. All right, June. Well, hey, you you drive safe, man. It sounds like you still got some uh, time on your hands, so make sure you uh, drive yeah. safe. Hey, uh, before you get on up out of here, man, what 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 do you do to uh, alleviate the stress uh, that comes with trucking, man? What what kind of tips you can uh, you can leave us with before you leave out the door? Oh man, for good music. I love I love my oldies. <laughs> so good music and prayer. I do, I do a lot of praying and I listen to a lot of oldies. All right, that's what's up, man. All right, I appreciate you coming on, man. Stay safe and I appreciate you uh supporting the channel, bro. Hey man, man. Thank you. Thank you for uh uh, uh, allow me to tell my story. Thank you. You're very welcome, man. Thank you for coming on to uh, to share it with us. All right, man. You stay safe, and I'll see you in the comments. All right. Bye. Uh, later. <laughs>